Some of it's going to be hard to believe and quite startling. Nobody's asking us to judge and analyze it at all, but if you use it, you will see that the ideas work and the ideas are true if you use it. Guess what? You and me, we're not that far apart. Yeah. We are beating the same heart. We've been together even though we kind of get away from each other through reincarnation and having new bodies, but we still kind of end up being around each other anyway, which is great. It's wonderful to be with my mighty companions today. Pick your arms around it. Know that we are one. Yes, we are. That means we're the same. Yes, we are. This whole answer would I give to you be the child that I call it you so the direction gives me peace. This holy 
Can we acknowledge us, Holy Spirit? Can we do it? We're going to be in the heal relationship. If you got the book, it's on page 362 in the Course in Miracles. Uh, the purpose of this section is to have heal relationships. So if there are any relationships in your life that are less than thrilling to you in any way, <laughs> there's a possibility that there are any relationships in your life that is less than thrilling in any way, this section is for you. Uh, I'm going to go as far as I can. If I don't complete it today, I'll complete it next week. It's a section I don't want to rush through because it's so important. The Course of Miracles says a healed relationship is a holy relationship. So a holy relationship is a healed relationship, and a healed relationship is a happy relationship and a loving relationship. Do you want one? Yes. yes. Would you like to have those kinds of relationships? Yes. So I'm gonna move a little bit faster than usual because I want to move a little bit faster than usual. <laughs> okay? So I'm gonna substitute the word heal the loving for the word holy. Holy in the Course in Miracles is another term for sane. It says a holy relationship is a sane relationship. It's a loving relationship. It's a healed relationship. So a holy relationship is an expression of the holy instant of living in this world. Like everything else about peace and happiness, the holy instant is a practical device witnessed to by its results. So the holy heal relationship, it says it never failed. The holy instant never failed. The experience of, of a holy happy instant is always felt, yet without expression is not remembered. If you feel anything that you don't express, you don't remember it. If you feel anything you don't express, you don't remember it. You forget you ever felt it. The reason why people tend to remember when they're angry and upset more than when they're happy is that in most cases, when people are angry and upset, they express it, and when they feel love, they don't. So it'll seem like there's more unhappiness than happiness in your experience if you find you're quick to let everybody know how upset you are, but you're not so quick to look them, look them in the eye and say, I love you, I appreciate you. So then it says, um, as the, so, so the holy instant, is a whole relationship is a constant reminder of the experience in which the relationship became what it is. And as the unholy, special, unhappy, guilty, insane, fearful relationship is a continual hymn of hate and praise of its maker, your ego, the unhappy relationship is a constant praise, it's constantly praising your fear, it's constantly praising your ego. The Course says the holy relationship, the happy relationship, the healed relationship is a happy song of praise to God, to love, to, redeemer of, to the redeemer of the relationship. And it take about 10 or 15 minutes on an average to begin to tune in. So that's, that's I, so I understand that. It takes a minute to come out of the part of our mind is in panic because it's here <laughs> to get to the part of us that really wants to hear what's being said. Uh, then it goes on to tell us, says, um, the holy relationship, which is a happy relationship, a loving relationship, is a major step towards the perception of the real world. So you have to learn it. So you learn how to have a happy relationship. You learn how to have a loving relationship. You learn how to have a holy relationship. People think happy relationships and cool relationships are just going to happen. And the Course of Miracles are saying, that, nah, that's not the way it works. If you're going to have a happy, healed, really cool, loving relationship, your butt's going to have to work on it. There's some things you're going to have to think differently, act differently, and do differently. Just because you're cute and y'all turned on by each other, y'all know, know by now that that doesn't guarantee a happy relationship. It's ridiculous how much we fall for that every time, but we'll do it every time. Every time, you know. Um, See, the once you begin to evolve and wake up spiritually, it will not be enough just to be in a relationship with somebody that's nice. Yeah. See, if you've been in really lousy relationships, the first time you meet somebody that te treats you nice, you're going to be attracted to them, and you're going to go, oh, this is a better relationship than I've ever had, which it indeed may be. <coughs> but if you're a consciously evolving being that wants to use your relationship for spiritual development, you're going to want somebody you can talk to about the things that help wake you up and help you grow spiritually. So it won't be enough that they're just nice. It won't be enough that, that you just can hang out with each other. You're going to want the relationship to result in you feeling like you've grown in some way after you leave them. And we all know the physical aspects of the relationship, 
that plays out over a period of time. I don't care how good it is in the beginning, the physical, sexual parts of it is a romantic relationship that does not sustain the relationship over a long period of time. You know, the same person who couldn't wait to see you naked be trying to get you out in front of the TV to watch a commercial six months later. You know, so it, it's not always the physical thing that lasts. You all know that. You, I know that. You know that. We know that, right? right. right. But we fall for it still continually. Right. Okay. Then it says, so what is a holy, happy relationship? He says it's the old, unhappy, I'm paraphrased, crappy, crazy relationship, uh, transformed and seen anew. So a holy relationship, which is a loving relationship, is the old relationship seen in a new way, and it may also be a brand new relationship. So you could have a transformation of the relationships that you're in, and you could also have new relationships that show up that you've never had before that are happy and healing. Then it says that the holy relationship, a healed relationship, a sane relationship, is a phenomenal teaching accomplishment. What does that mean? What it means in all its aspects, as the holy relationship begins, develops, and becomes accomplished, it re represents the reversal of your unhappy relationship. So as you pull this off, it's going to be a reversal of everything you've ever experienced before. Yay! <laughs> then it says, be confident in this. The only difficult part is the beginning. The only <laughs> difficult part is the beginning. The hardest part of anything is just starting it, getting it going beginning because we can be so set in our ways that starting anything new is the hardest part. You know, you know, if you want to start an exercise res regimen, what's the hardest part? Beginning. Starting a new job, what's the hardest part? Beginning it. You know, saying you're going to get up in the morning and meditate. What's the hardest part? Getting up in the morning and meditating in the beginning. So it's kind of ridiculous when you say you want to change and experience something new that you think that it's going to be easy in the beginning. It's all, almost better to say, the most. I'm now dealing with the most difficult part, which is good news. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm dealing with the most difficult part at the beginning, then it means as I proceed, what should happen? Things should get easier. So if you're on a true spiritual path, your life should not be getting more complicated, harder. It should be getting simpler and easier. If your life, or any part of your life is still very difficult, it only means what? You're still at the beginning. And your beginning may have lasted 15 years. <laughs> if that's how long you think you've been going through crap. Okay, you've been at the beginning for a long time. And the Course in Miracles then says to us, be confident in this. The only difficult part is the beginning. For here, at the beginning, what's going to happen? It says, well, the goal of the relationship is abruptly shifted to the exact opposite of what it was. This is the first result of offering your relationship to God, to Holy Spirit, and to love to use for its purpose. So if I give my relationship up to God, give my relationship up to love, then the purpose of it is going to be exactly the opposite from the one that my ego is used it for. My ego, the part of me that doesn't love me, the part of me that's my false self, the part of me that's full of fear and guilt, has been using my relationship to cause me pain and suffering and fear. Now I'm saying I want a relationship that's based on love and peace and joy. So now you have a new goal. You with the person or in the situation, you really want to have joy and peace and satisfaction in that. So it says, this invitation is accepted immediately. So as soon as you say, God, I'm going to give my relationship up to you, the Court says, well, the Holy Spirit, which is the voice for God in you, God in you, wastes what? No time in doing what? I'm going to introduce the practical results of asking me to enter. So uh, pretend I represent the voice of the Holy Spirit, and I'm also going to pretend I represent the voice of the ego. Sometimes it's easier to visualize things. So you just ask me, the Holy Spirit, to take over in your relationship. I'm accepting your invitation immediately. I'm going to waste no time in introducing the practical results of asking me to enter. All right? So you ask me to enter. This is what's going to happen. You ask for God to take over, Spirit to take over, love to take over. This is what's going to happen, okay? What's going to happen? Well, at once my goal, which is your happiness, is going to replace your goal, which is putting yourself through endless crap most of the time broken into by periods in which you go to a movie, <laughs> okay? You, that, that you think it's normal to go up and down and up and down and up and down. We happy today. We sad today. I feel good with you today. I don't feel good with you tomorrow. We're used to fear and conflict broken into by periods in which it looks like we're getting along, right? So now you ask me, spirit, to be in charge of your relationship. Now you want to have true, ever-expanding, ever-increasing sanity, love, and joy. Yes. Is this not correct? Yes. 
Okay, then it says, well, my gold is going to replace your gold. This is going to be accomplished very rapidly. So as soon as you ask me to enter, I'm going to enter the relationship very rapidly. And you can tell when I've shown up. You can tell when Holy Spirit has shown up because it makes the relationship seem disturbed, disjunctive, and even quite distressing. <laughs> What? Wait a minute now. I just asked God to take over. You tell me that it's going to pretty much feel the way it always has? <laughs> disturbed now, but now the disturbed, now the disjunctive, now the distressing is a result of another purpose. It's almost like if you go to the hospital and you have an operation and you're going through a, a pain when you come back, you see that pain as being part of the healing even though you were, you were feeling pain before you had the operation, but that was part of the illness. Mm -hmm. Now you're having pain that's the part of the healing. So when you say, God, take over, and you can apply this to any relationship, your financial relationship, your money relationship, your, uh, your romantic relationship, your relationship with your family and your friends. This is talking about any kind of relationship. When you say, God, take over, then the first thing that's going to happen as part of the healing is that it's going to become disturbed, distressing, and disjunctive, and I'm going to tell you why. It says the reason why that's going to happen is because the relationship, as it is, is out of line with its own goal. That means what? The relationship, the way you have it right now, is unsuited to the purpose of pure happiness that's been accepted for it. In the old condition, the unhappy condition, your goal was all that seemed to give it meaning. See, before the relationship was just about me and about my goal and about my script. Before I was using my relationship for separation and I was using my relationship just for specialness and I had a lot of scripts and I needed my relationship for validation. I knew I had this relationship and it was all about really my joy, my happiness, restoring my wounded self-esteem, helping me feel like I'm really valuable and loved at some level. Mm -hmm. And the course would take it even further. It would say your relationship was being used by your ego to make you feel guilty and separate from God. That's, that's why. Now, a person would say, well, I didn't have that goal. Of course, if you knew you had that goal, you'd probably do something about it. So we uh, sometimes think we are consciously aware of all our motivations and all our goals, but actually most of our motivations and our goals are unconscious to us, not conscious. We, The Course of Miracles says we make the decision to experience something, especially things that don't bring us happiness because we don't think we are loved enough. And then we make the decision to forget we made the decision. Because when you, if you make the decision to forget you made the decision, then it can look like things are happening to you that you didn't decide should happen to you. So if you, if you are really the creator of your experience, but you're denying you the creator of your experience, then you're still the creator of your experience. But what you're going to do is deny that. And that means I'm going to forget that I made the decision to be treated like this because I don't think I deserve to be loved. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the decision. You made the decision to give them your phone number. <laughs> they couldn't get in touch with you probably unless you arranged it some kind of way. And, and a lot of times you can tell which decision you made by who is the one you give the most attention to. Do you give the most attention to the one who's treating you lovingly and peacefully? Or do you give the most attention to the person that you're in the most conflict and fear with? Do you run away from the people that treat you kindly and there's never enough time for them, but you have endless amounts of time for the people that you're in conflict with in one way or another? Mm, this is just questions, right? And the Course in Miracles then tells us that uh, now the relationship seems to make no sense because the person was all about my goals. Many relationships have broken off at this point. The pursuit of the old goal reestablished in another relationship. And for once the unhappy relationship has accepted the goal of happiness, it can never again be what it was. Because it was a happy relationship, and now it's going to be an unhappy relationship, and now it's going to be a happy relationship, then it can no longer be what it was, which was an unhappy relationship. I don't want my relationship to be what it was. I want it to be the opposite of what it was. And what it was was something that was not completely satisfying to me. Now I won't have to have complete satisfaction in the relationship. So I'm really saying I don't want this relationship to be the way it was. Then it says the temptation of your ego, your false self, your old self to party, you just doesn't think you deserve happiness, becomes extremely intense with this shift of goals. Because the, re the relationship has not as yet changed sufficiently to make its old form of goal completely without attraction. And the structure of your relationship is threatened by the recognition of its inappropriateness for meeting a new purpose. What does that mean? 
all of a sudden, I realize how inappropriate my relationship is for the new goal that I set for it. I decided I want to be in a totally happy relationship with you, Jason, and all of a sudden I ask God to come into the relationship, and one of the first things I'm going to see in order to go toward the way we want to have a good friendship is I'm going to see everything that's screwed up about our friendship. I'm going to see everything about it that's not loving, that's not okay, that needs to be changed. That's the reason why it seems disjunctive and distressing. It's because all of a sudden you see just how inappropriate your relationship is for what you say you want it to be. Am I, am I losing anybody? Yeah. Okay. Then it says um, the conflict between the goal. I wanted to be a really loving, heal, heal relationship with my mama, with my brothers, with my sisters. The goal and the structure of the relationship, my mama slams the door whenever I come to the house. <laughs> um, it's so apparent that the goal and the way the relationship is cannot coexist. The goal that I set for our relationship and the way our relationship is, it cannot coexist. So what the Course says you should do? He says, well, don't change the goal. Don't change your goal of having a peaceful, loving, holy relationship. Set firmly in an unhappy relationship. There's no course except to change the relationship to fit the goal. I have a new goal. I've got to change the structure of the relationship to fit the goal. Rather than changing the goal in order to keep the structure of the relationship. I want a relationship where I have peace and harmony and communication and oneness. I'm in a relationship that's not that way. Um, I've got to let that relationship be changed enough for me to have that peace and harmony and joy and sanity and oneness that I want. I have to do whatever is necessary in the changing the form of that relationship to give me. And you, can, and you can also apply this to yourselves. For those of you who say, well, I'm not in a relationship. That's a lie. You are in a relationship. I'm not just talking about romantic relationships, and people say that sometimes. Well, that didn't really apply to me because I'm not in a romantic. I ain't talking about that. You ha you're in a relationship with something. All of us are. You, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of funny when I have pe hear people say that as if romantic relationships are the only kind of relationships we have. So therefore, if I'm not talking about that, then I'm not talking about something that's valid. And I'm going to put some of you to sleep and have sweet, pleasant dreams. And I'm going to keep on going just like I'm going, all right? All right. Now, some people have reached their limit and have an unhappy relationship, so they're at the edge of their seat and they want to do it differently. Some haven't suffered enough, so therefore they're going to go unconscious to keep whatever it is they have going. That's okay. You can understand any way it goes because there is a limit to pain, and you will reach yours either in this lifetime or another one. So I'm, so I'm cool with you and you're cool with me, all right? That's what I love about being separate. What appears like separation allows me to go ahead and work on myself and move at the speed and the pace that works for me without having to worry about whether anybody else is going to get on board. So I like that part about separation, is that I don't have to be slowed down because of where somebody else is coming from because we're the same and they're going to ultimately get it anyway. But uh, people who suffer are people who've decided that suffering is the solution. Because through suffering, they're absolving themselves of guilt through giving themselves the punish, punishment that they think they deserve before they let themselves be happy. Do you understand that? So suffering is a solution to people who suffer. The suffering is their solution to their suffering. If I suffer enough one day, I'll be okay again. Like when I was a kid, I got spanked, and me and my mama were okay again. I did something wrong, I got spanked, now I'm okay. You're, you're doing things wrong, you spank yourself, now you're okay. You all practice self as an M. So, <laughs> you're your own dub and your own son. <laughs> okay, your own dumb and your own son. And, and, and that's the perfect term, dumb. Okay. Now, then it goes on to say, until this happy solution is seen and accepted as the way out of conflict, the relationship may seem to be severely strained. Okay, so what is it that makes a person's relationship seem severely strained? Uh, not changing the relationship to suit their new goal. That's what makes the relationship seem to be strained. Now, it wouldn't be kind to shift the goal more slowly. Don't do this slowly, because the contrast between the old relationship and the new relationship would be obscured, and so your ego would give, be given time to reinterpret every step according to its liking. Your old self would just let you go so slow that you don't really realize you're not really changing as much as you think you are, mm -hmm. right? Then it says, well, then what makes the kind of shift that makes a difference? It says only a radical shift. 
in purpose could induce what? A complete change of mind. So what is a complete change of mind? What causes a complete change of mind? A radical shift in your goal. That's what the Course of Miracles calls a change of mind. A change of mind is a radical shift in your purpose. See, my purpose is peace. Where it used to be, my purpose was being special. And then getting everyone to act out what I thought they needed to do to make me happy and to make me feel special. That used to be my goal. My goal was the spanking when I thought I wasn't good enough. You understand what I'm saying? So I have to have a radical shift of purpose. So what does that mean? I am not going to be in a relationship that we are arguing all the time. I am not going to be in a relationship where we constantly projecting on each other and saying the other person is the reason why I'm unhappy. I'm going to not be in a relationship where I'm not taking responsibility for my experience and I'm looking for somebody to show up and rescue me. It made me. I made a radical shift in purpose. My goal is to know God more than anything else in my life now. And to know peace and love more than anything more than anything or anybody. Anything you put before your peace is your idol. If you put a person before your relationship with God, if you put a purpose before your relationship to peace, if you if your spiritual growth is something you get to after you do everything else, everything else you're doing is your idol. If it's what you get to after you do everything else, it's not really your purpose. So if I'm not choosing for love, I don't have any choice but to receive what's not love. If I'm not making love my primary goal, insanity my primary goal, I'm going to experience insanity. It's, there's no middle ground. There is no being on the fence between love and fear, sanity and insanity. If I'm not in sanity, I am in insanity. There is no in-between. If I'm not in love, I am in fear. There is not an in-between state of Hmm, do I choose love or do I choose fear? No, you are either in fear or love all the time, one or the other, period. Deep, deep. So the Course says, what is the radical shift in purpose that would induce a complete change of mind about what the whole relationship is for? That's what you want, a complete change of mind about what you think the relationship is for. So first, first thing you need to do and I need to do, if I want to have a healed relationship, is to get clear about what do I want this relationship for. That's the first thing I ask people. You, what do you want a relationship for? Most of them name stuff that has nothing to do with anything that makes a relationship real. They, know, they, they normally mention something on the outside. I want somebody to do something with. Or to go on trips. Or somebody that makes me feel good. You know, or that they're cute. You know, I need somebody with blue eyes. Okay, they could be a serial killer, but as long as they have blue eyes, you're okay. Okay, just, like, as if that really is the most important thing. You know we do it. You know there's a part of us that do it every day. And the Course in Miracles is saying, no, there are only two purposes. You're either going to use a relationship to wake up to who you really are, or you're going to use a relationship to go to sleep. You're either going to use a relationship to become more conscious of your oneness and your power and your spirit, or you're going to use a relationship to make you feel not enough, insecure, fearful, and separate. It's always the content of the relationship that matters. The form doesn't matter at all. It doesn't matter. They can have blue eyes, gray eyes, whatever you want them to have. They can be black, white, short, uh, uh, tall. Those things don't matter. What matters is what am I going to experience in my relationship with you? What am I going to be experiencing in this relationship with you? Because when I say I'm going to have a relationship with you, I'm saying I'm willing to experience the results of your thinking with you. That the way you think, I'm going to go through it with you. And you know you do in a relationship. If you're in a relationship with somebody with bad credit, it affects both of you. You know, if you're with someone who's insecure, their insecurity affects both of you. Or if you're with someone that's secure and powerful and conscious, you reap the benefits of that also. So when you say you want to be in a relationship with somebody, you're really saying, do I want to go through everything that this person goes through with them? Especially the result of their thinking. Mm. 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 I wrote with the book because I want people to eventually, hopefully, pick up the book themselves. That's, that's my long-term goal, is that, that somebody will actually pick this book up and want to change enough to spend the time necessary to have miracles. And so if I'm reading from it and you're understanding what I'm saying, 
then you know it's possible for you to understand what it's saying. Because I'm looking down the page and I'm saying what it's saying and y'all are hearing it. So the idea that you can't read it and can't get it isn't true. That's your ego, the part of you that wants to keep you limited. And in whatever state that you're in that you're not happy in, that's the part of you that wants to keep that going. And, I, and it's deep because you have to make a decision and be proactive about it. Yes, I have an ego. Yes, I have a voice in my head that's always telling me stuff that makes me feel conflict and fear. And it will always do that. It was made to do that. So I shouldn't be trying to spend all my time trying to get rid of that voice. What I should be doing is spending my time not listening to it. And if I don't invest in it, it will start to become a quieter voice. It wants you to spend all your time trying to get rid of your ego, my ego. You know, the truth is, yeah, I have a crazy voice. I have an insane roommate. It goes everywhere I go. It's giving me advice that's so crappy that it doesn't make me feel good. That's how I know it's my ego. I'm not feeling good because of what I'm telling myself. That's your first clue you're listening to your ego is a lack of peace. So, in, so if you're walking around, Earl, and you feel lack of peace, then you're listening to a false voice that you've made up that's not rooted in God and love. So therefore, don't analyze it. Just don't obey it. It wants you to get into the analyzation of it. That, that builds it up. That builds it up. Rather than you go, okay, I hear that voice, I'm noticing that voice, I'm looking at that voice, and what would God have me do? Where would God have me go? What would God have me say? What would love have me say? Where would love have me go? What is the truth in this book telling me to do? I hear my ego, but what is this telling me to do? Oh, it's telling me that if I call on God and I got a relationship, the hardest part is going to be the beginning, and when God takes over, I'm going to start freaking out because I'm going to see how much my relationship is the opposite of what I say I want it to be, and I know I need to change my goal and my relationship to fit my goal, and I need to be about this and not be jabbing around. I need to make a radical shift in my purpose. If I have a radical shift in my purpose, I have changed my mind. That means I might have to start saying, no, 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 to so many things I used to think and do. I have to start saying no to that kind of person when they show up again because I've been ordering that hamburger person for so long <laughs> that it's like when you walk into a bar and they fix you a drink before you even ask for one. I just took up the restaurants so I can sit right here in Memphis. Uh, I go to Annie's a lot of times. As soon as I sit down, she goes, Ooh, here's your raspberry tea. I haven't asked for it, right? Because I've ordered it so many times, she knows. That's the way, you're, that's the way you are about your patterns. You've done it so many times that it, your, your experience just automatically shows up with your pattern boyfriend, your pattern girlfriend, your pattern relationship situation, your pattern spirit. And so you have to get to the point to go, oh, I'm not really into raspberry tea. I appreciate you bringing it to me, but I want a glass of orange juice. So I have to say no to the tea to get the orange juice. And so you're going to have orders from the past still showing up to tempt you to do exactly what you've done before, and you have to be able to say, no, I don't accept that kind of relationship anymore. No, I don't accept that kind of conversation anymore. No, I don't accept that kind of attitude anymore. Because it's going to show up because you've been ordering it for so long. So you might have to say no. And it's going to be hard because it's easy to follow the path of least resistance. And the path of least resistance is always what is my habit and what I've habitually learned to do. So at first you got to be strong, but you have the Holy Spirit with you. You have your same mind with you. You have God with you. You are not alone trying to do this. You are not alone trying to do this. You are not alone trying to do this. Those of you online, you're not alone trying to do this. Do you hear me? All right? And keep communicating with each other also. So, <clears throat> because when we're online doing this with several hundred other people, who are watching this class live right now, we have the collective energy of all our brothers and sisters that are supporting us right now. It's more people in my class than the physical bodies that's sitting up in this room. There are people all over the world who are not here who are doing mass with us, and there are beings that are outside the body and this world who are here with us. We are never alone. Remember that the next time you're taking a shower. <laughs> okay, now. Oh, yeah, just a second. As these two individuals contemplate, it says, uh, it's, okay, here we go. And I, I, in this paragraph, I'll throw it open for questions for uh, a, little, a little while. Um, because a lot of times you can tell when somebody's heard you because it will trigger a question. What you have to watch with your question is that you haven't already decided what the answer is 
and that you're expecting me to validate the answer you've already come up with, which isn't really a question, it's a statement in the form of a question. And that's what we do usually as adults, right? <laughs> yeah, we usually already have an idea of what it is. And what triggers me is usually the thing I most need to take a look at, so that's why questions that come up, that's very good. It usually means your ego has gotten threatened by something that's heard or confused by something that is heard. And what is our ego? Our ego is our self-concept. It's the idea of yourself that you've made up through all the past experiences you've had since you've landed here. It's all the experiences that you've had since you've landed here that you now identify as you. I am not a black man. I am not this body. I am not my beliefs. I am not my emotions. And I'm not my thoughts. I am the one that's experiencing them. We think we are our thoughts. We are our feelings. We are our emotions. I bet you most of you think you're men or women. Or black or white. Or young or old. That's your problem. You're more than that. Much greater than that. And it's not putting that down. It's just not what you are. Why? Of course I'd be unhappy if all day long I'm acting from an identity that's not truly mine. I'd have a hard time living my life as an eagle. I feel like a dismal failure in my ability to fly. <laughs> Certainly would need glasses. <laughs> so why are most people unhappy? Because they don't know who they are and they're trying to be something other than who they are. And that's why they feel a sense of failure. Because you're not being yourself. You're trying to live out what society or something or somebody else told you you should value, what you should be, how to do relationships. Relationships uh, are what I see most people use to cause themselves pain, right? So that must be the proof that we have completely erroneous ideas about how to do them. And there's a case, in most cases, of the blind leading the blind. People who never had loving relationships telling people how to have them. D. That's why I said when you're attracted to somebody and you know your pattern is to always choose somebody that's not the best one for you, then when you feel attracted to somebody, you need to go the other way. You should be suspicious just because you are attracted to them. Because you know your pattern. You know your raspberry tea order. So I'm not saying that you might not pursue that relationship, but you should definitely want to have a deep conversation before you go any further. And you should be very clear about what you want. The goal should be very clear. And it's literally to be a case of let's talk. Let me hear what you value. Let me hear what's important to you. Let me tell you. Because if I tell you what I value what's important to me, and you just want to get next to me, you're going to say you're into it too. <laughs> or at least you're interested. Oh, yes, I, I think I want to check that class out myself. <laughs> <laughs> so just stay aware that pain comes from self-deception. Pain comes from self-deception, from fooling yourself. Deceiving yourself. That's what causes all pain, according to the Course of Miracles. I'm hurting in financially. You're totally fooling yourself about the abundance that's already available to you as a child of God. I'm going through a lot of pain in my relationship. You're totally deceiving yourself about what a happy relationship is. You see what I'm saying? I, my body is hurting. You're totally deceiving yourself about what the body is and how to look at it. Don't want to be right when you're miserable. Don't want to be right when you're miserable. Miserable people should go, I hope I'm wrong, 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 I hope I'm wrong. I'm happy people should be going, I hope I'm wrong, I hope I'm wrong, I hope I'm wrong. Not I'm right and I'm going to justify it and I'm going to prove it to you. Right? So the Course says, as this change develops and is finally accomplished, the relationship becomes what? Increasingly beneficial and joyous. So how can you tell when you really change your mind and you're practicing? 
the relationship should become increasingly joyous. But at the beginning, the situation is experienced as very precarious. A relationship undertaken by two individuals for their unholy, fearful, special purposes suddenly have happiness and love as their goal. Two crazy people all of a sudden going, we're going to have joy together. <laughs> all right? And then the Course says, as these two contemplate their relationship from the point of view of their new purpose, they are inevitably appalled. When I really see the purpose that I have in this relationship versus what I'm experiencing in this relationship, I am appalled. Their perception of the relationship may even become quite disorganized. I don't know what the hell is going on. And yet the former organization of their perception, I love that, the former, the former, the former organization of my perception of you, my old way of looking at your butt, uh, no longer serves the purpose that we've agreed to me, to me. Uh, the old way I used to look at you is not serving the purpose of, the, of us loving each other and having sanity with each other. The old way, and what was the old way? It's your fault. I'm a victim of you. If you would change, I'd be happy. That's what it means when it talks about your old way of looking at things. It's saying you holding them responsible for your happiness and everything being their fault and saying, if you would just change, I would be happy. If you would just change, I would be happy. If you would just change, I would be happy. That's what I see most relationships. <laughs> and when you pay attention to the two people involved, that's what they sit in front of you and say, if they change, I'd be happy. If only you change, I'd be happy. No, if you would change, I would be happy. No, if you would change, I would be happy. If you would change, I'd be happy. If you would change, I would be happy. That's all you hear most. Check out your friends, check out your relatives, check out yourself, and, 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 and just get past the words that they're using. And I bet you anything, you'll hear them saying, if you were different, I'd be happy. If you were different, I'd be happy. If you were different, I'd be happy. If you just came home later, I'd be happy. If you just came home early, I'd just be happy. If you didn't come home at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happy. It's always something, right? That's the form of organization. Ta-da! Question. We got our goal. And we're having relationships with all these people. So do you see? Speak louder for me. How do you know mm -hmm. when you want to say, no, I'm not going to do this. No, this is another raspberry iced tea. I don't want to do this. Or is it worth changing your form of perception of how it is? It would be based on whether or not the relationship is going increasingly beneficial and valuable to you even if it looks like you're going through what you were told you would go through before was a little bit of a stretch. See, it's, for me, it's, it's very simple. I, I just have to use myself as an example. If, if, if I am in a relationship with someone and they don't share the purpose of peace and they're not willing to do what's necessary to have that and they're not willing to take any responsibility for what's going on and, not, and they want to attack, they ain't worth it. <laughs> you know, that's how you know. Right, you, you, you know. that it could look like craziness for, for a second. But, but I just said at the very beginning, I said, even if it, 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 was, it already told me that we we're going to go through, we may go through some stress while we're doing this, but if we still stay focused on our purpose and we're still sharing our purpose and we're still willing to take responsibility, then it's worth the effort. You see what I'm saying? The, 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 what's, what's important is I, I assume that everybody in here are not trying to enter uh, intimate relationships with children. Can we assume that? Okay, so you should be doing it with an adult. So therefore, you should be with someone that you all could communicate and share goals and purposes with each other. And, uh, and it's not really asking us to do anything hard, because remember, you've still given it. It says you gave it to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is taking over in the relationship. Don't forget that part. Don't make this something else that you've got to do on your own. Don't, don't look at this again like, OK, here's another thing that I've got to do. No. This is a thing that the Holy Spirit has to do. This is the thing that God, working through you and them, has, has to do. It's just asking us to be willing to have the relationship change to suit that goal and be willing to follow the instructions that we're being given to do that. See, this is, I'm, I'm, let me tell you something right, right now. If you're sitting up here thinking that you're going to do this without the instruction book, you're not. 
Because you still think you're going to do this, but you're still not going to give any, anything your spiritual study. You're still not going to give anything your attention. You're still not going to look to something outside of yourself. You, you're still not going to go to a higher power, to, to your spiritual teaching. Then you're missing this whole point. It's not about us making up again how we're going to do this as we make it up as we go along. And as adults, that's what we're taught, that we're supposed to be totally autonomous and self-sufficient and do all of this on our own and figure it out on our own. The course is saying, and every spiritual text says, that's the problem is you trying to do it your way on your own. And so therefore, you need instruction. So that's why I'm reading out the book, so that you can see that I'm reading instructions. So... This might not be your instruction, but your instruction will come to you in a form that you can relate to. So I'm not saying A Course in Miracles is the only way. I'm saying The Course in Miracles is the way for people that it's the way for. And they will know who they are by how much they will do it, even though they're having resistance. The resistance never stops a true student of a path. It only stops the person who really is not really dedicated to the goal or it's just not their path. Are you following me on this? Because I, if, if there's nothing else I would like you to hear from me today is you won't get it by trying to make it up as you go along without tuning into a higher level of guidance and wisdom and power. And that it's not going to be something that usually happens because you're sitting back trying to figure it out as you go along. That's why he told us, when I take over, you're going to go through some challenges because you're going to see how your relationship is nothing like what you say you want. He told us, the hardest part is going to be the beginning. Change your goal. Focus on and change your relationship to suit the goal. Then he told us, told us that we need to have a radical shift in purpose. That's what's going to produce a complete change of mind told us that at the very beginning, you're going to be appalled, but you're still going to go toward the goal. It's like, if you, it's like if you're trying to achieve something in the beginning, you're not that good at it. Readiness is not mastery. So at the beginning, you're not going to be an expert at playing saxophone. I would have never learned how to play saxophone with the attitude that I see most people have towards spiritual development. <laughs> they hear about being unconditionally loving, and connected to God and immediately in that moment compare themselves to that and then feel like they're coming up short and discouraged just like it would have been for me to go, wow, I'm trying to learn how to play saxophone. I can't play like John Coltrane and so I should put my horn down. Stop doing that. Nobody's expecting you to be perfect at loving people or perfect at forgiveness right now or perfect at seeing yourself as innocent right now. There would be no need for you to head in that direction if you already know how to do it. Let yourself hear and receive the innocence that I'm offering you through the course, the peace. I'm going to do two more minutes, and then I'm going to have to go on. Okay, you had your hand up first. whether or not you BS in yourself by how much you applying the ideas in your own life and how much attention and study you're giving your path. It's like somebody saying, I'm a Course in Miracles student and they never read it. You know that's not true. It's not hard. Don't, that's why I always say to people, your ego is nothing, the ego is nothing but a genius in trying to make things that are very simple, very complex. That's very simple. If you, if you are fooling yourself, you know it because nothing about your peace is increasing and you're not studying, and you're not meditating, and you're not applying what you're learning. You can say it, but you know whether or not you're doing that. But the key way of knowing it is your peace isn't increasing. Or a key way to know it is that you still get upset about your own ego. In other words, you're just as much getting it when you get upset and don't get upset with yourself about getting upset <laughs> as you would be if you never got upset. Both of those mean you're growing. So you're not judging yourself for your guilt and your anger and your grievances. You know that's all part of you not knowing how to love completely yet. So you forgive yourself. You be gentle with yourself because you know you're learning. See, but I would know to tell y'all this if I hadn't studied this. I'm not this smart. 
Okay, it's just that I'm sharing with you something I've been working on for many years using this material. That's what you're hearing. I didn't figure any of this out. And I still have an ego. The only difference between my ego, how I do with my ego, and maybe the way you deal with your ego is I go to this quickly. Where people who don't go to their path keep the pain going. Because their adult ego mind tells them they have to figure this out without giving anything, any attention, or any study. Right? So I'm here to support you in going toward the happiness that you want. You had your hand up. It just seems to me that the thing that sticks out for me is mm -hmm. in a relationship, if the other person isn't going to join me in the goal, mm -hmm. then that's my clue. That's, that would be the easiest way. Yeah. Vision is recognizing the consequences of your choices before you go ahead and do it. Right? So if, I'm, if I meet you and I tell you that I'm into growth and spirit and trying to be more conscious and trying to be more loving, and you say, ha! Yeah. <laughs> I turn around and walk right. If I got your sense, I don't know, I might be your friend, yeah. but I ain't going to be your man. Because I want to move fast, and you would be a big old delaying maneuver because you don't share the purpose with me. But, this, but see, but if I'm into what you got and the way you look more than I am into sanity, then I'm going to still go for you even though I can see that you do not share the purpose of peace with me. And that's what I used to do. It was the appearance and the outer that meant more to me than the inner at a certain point. That's not true for me now. And even if it was, and that is in temptation abound, <laughs> and even if it was, I would forgive myself if I did. Because I'm still innocent, even if I choose my pattern again. If I had one more glass of raspberry tea, I'm still innocent. Yeah. You know, I just need to get better at saying no to the raspberry tea. So guilt is unacceptable. Beating yourself up and condemning yourself for anything that you do while you're trying to learn, that is unacceptable. You're not going to play an instrument perfectly the first time you pick it up. And guess what God is saying to y'all? You're, you're innocent. You are loved regardless of the mistakes and the errors that you make. That that is not an issue. Don't take that one off the shelf that somehow or another you're going to be condemned for any mistakes that you make while you're trying to learn. Take that off the shelf so that you can feel okay about yourself even if you do make an error, even if you do do the thing you've done before. You won't condemn yourself because God isn't condemning you, so why should you? And even if you do, that's just you condemning yourself and still isn't the universe condemning you. So don't sweat it. Yeah, maybe I, do, maybe I forgot myself and cursed somebody out all day long. Big friggin' deal. I'm still loved by God. I still need to ask for another way of looking at it, and I need to ask for forgiveness for myself. I, I, I'm sorry. You have, you have actually chosen a totally loving curriculum with a totally loving teacher. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So no matter how you think you deserve punishment because you would still punish someone else, <coughs> No matter how much it's hard for you to believe that you can make a mistake and not be condemned for because you condemn people for their mistakes and you still condemn yourself, then we're projecting onto God our characteristics. No wonder we'd be scared to death of God. Because what I learned about God sounds like a dysfunctional adult. And that never set right with me. But when I hear this unconditionally loving, I will help correct you, show you another way of looking at it. Now that resonates with my soul. But that idea that I can make a mistake that my creator could not correct, correct or heal or teach me through, that's my attitude toward me. That's not God's attitude toward me. That's my attitude toward me. And so I'm sitting up here saying you deserve unconditional love, and that makes me the most suspicious person that ever sat before you. And I'm black too. I know people try to pretend that that doesn't matter at any level, but you need to take a look at the world you're in, and you know that's crap. Okay, that we have unconscious racist thoughts. We all do. We see it. And now, where's what Brother Trump is doing? Brother Trump is saying, I'm going to get y'all, get you guys out of denial. Y'all so deep in denial, I just need to help y'all see that y'all need to learn how to communicate, dialogue, and love each other more. And stop pretending like you're going to feel what you feel. And then don't turn around and project it on those racists. Because any conscious being knows you're only seeing a projection of your own thoughts everywhere. Right. So rather than deny that, 
I want to ask for another way of looking at it, a radical shift in my purpose, and change my relationships to fit the goal of love. See, that's what I want to do. And I want to join with other people that want to do it. That's another thing. Stop trying to get people who don't want to go on the journey with you to want to go on the journey with you. There are more people who want to join you in your goal that you can ever get around to, and you can move a lot faster. Don't spend five minutes trying to convince somebody to want to join you on your journey. Somebody sent to you by God will want to join you on your journey. Will want to join you on your journey. Okay, I'm going to take these last two questions. Chris. So, what do you do when when you're in a situation where your pattern is you quote unquote fall in love with someone and they're literally like your brother. They're literally like if you were smoking crack or snorting coke. And, <laughs> and then you try to let go of that but like you actually feel like withdrawal. Like if you were withdrawing from crack. No. <laughs> no. If you can sit up and tell me that person is like a drug and that person is like crack, then you know you don't have to keep doing it. See, if you could, the you that could tell me what you were doing is the real you. That means you are not the person who is the drug. Right. That, the, 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 that means you are, choo you are consciously choosing to continue to deal with that person because you were able to tell me the pattern that you want to get past. That means Chris still wants to suffer and I'm saying the answer is you recognizing you're innocent and you deserve love to the point that you're believing that you are valuable would be so huge that you would never waste your time on someone who is not seeing you and loving you and treating you right. Because you felt so valuable. So they're just making you aware that, this, that the way out is for Chris to love Chris more and not even put the focus on them because it has nothing to do with them. It has to do with you not loving yourself enough to say no. And what's so cool about it is you're completely in charge of loving Chris. See, if I'm trying to get you to love me, Chris, then I'm trying to do something that I seemingly have no power about. But how much love I give to Raj, how much love I give to Earl, that is completely within my power to allow me to care about me. So I try to make myself, because I can only change myself, I try to be what I want to have. As soon as I decide what kind of people I want in my life, I set about becoming that myself because I know that I'm going to always attract to me, me. So rather than go, how can I get the woman or the man that would be the perfect one for me, I become the perfect me that I want to be and then let that draw to me somebody who appreciates that and values that and sees that because they will be drawn to you. Like Those like you, they'll recognize you and they'll be attracted to you. But most people don't have the patience or the self-love to say no and to do the attention and study. You had, but yeah, okay. Does that make sense to everybody? Keep checking in. It's easy to come up with a million reasons why this won't work. But the, all that means is you haven't changed your mind about what you want to receive yet. That's all it means. Or else you would be jumping on, what did the Course of Miracles say that I need to do right now in order to have what I want? All I want to remember is what is it I heard today that I should be doing to have what I want? What was it that came through Raj that he was saying? when I Because he did talk about how to handle old situations when I come up, what would be the, the goal, how to handle, how the Holy Spirit's going to handle this when I ask for the Holy Spirit. What I would be doing if I really wanted this, I would be going, hmm, let me see if I can get this book as soon as I can, go back to that section that he just said, and what was it that said I should do in order to get the kind of relationship that I want. That's what a person would do who have decided that they don't want to go through pain anymore. So what really is shocking is when you see how much a part of you still wants to go through pain. Because you can't hide from what I just said. You know whether or not you're going to do anything you just heard. <laughs> you know. So, so what's good about that is it will give you a perfect opportunity to stop deceiving yourself, which is where the pain comes from. So all of a sudden you can go, wow, I really am not loving myself the way that I should. Why? Because I'm not doing one single thing that I just heard the Course in Miracles tell me to do. I'm going to walk right out of the room. I'm not going to read it. I'm not going to listen to it. I'm not going to ask people when they were interested in me what their purpose is, what their goal is, whether or not they're sharing my goal with me or not. 
uh, but next time I go through some distress while I'm uh, trying to get this new relationship, I'm gonna forget that it told me that I would go through distress, but it also told me why I would go through distress. It told me I would go through distress because at first I'll see how much my relationship is inappropriate for the goal that I've set, and I wouldn't beat myself up about that because it already told me at first I'm gonna see just how my relationship is not what I want it to be, and that that's one of the stages. So therefore, why should I beat myself up for noticing the stage that I was told I would have? And in this section, it's going to take us all the way to the conclusion of how you pull it up. It's going to it's pull it out. It's going to take us back. And I'm going to cover the rest of this next week. <laughs> so, right? So, whoever wants to go further with that, then it's available online, live. It's available here. It will be posted. So, you see what I'm saying? The once you ask for help, help comes to us. Help has come. And if you go, I don't never want to see you again, black man. <laughs> it'll come another way, which is the beauty of it. it. Takes the pressure off of me and you. You deserve love, only love, nanny, 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 nanny. Nan. Would you acknowledge yourself? Come on now, you go let me come here tonight and find. Can I have some? <laughs> Those of you online, y'all awesome. Thank you for communicating. CJ, Kathy, Sophia, all of y'all. It's like it's, it's some serious, there's some serious communication going on here. There's some hearts being shot out. Let's do the uh, financial expression of appreciation. Thank you for sharing with me and with you in the temple here and my teaching ministry. It is such a thrill to have you all in my life. That's the truth about you. <laughs> I'm full. I'm full. I got 37 years of stuff I need to regurgitate on y'all. <laughs> I need the people out there on the line and in this class that really want to use me for real. And coming up this fall, I'm going to give you plenty of opportunities to do that. Because there are some people that really want to go deep and really want to get this and really want to take advantage of how many years I've studied the Course in Miracles and Way of Mastering the Course of Love because it doesn't mean nothing if I can't get it. You can't help but want to share something that you really get. That's a natural consequence of getting something is that you want to share it. But you move most quickly with the people who want to do it with you. So apply it to your personal life now. Don't spend a whole lot of time on trying to get your friends and your relatives to join you in a way of thinking and doing that they don't want. That's a trick. I've heard people say, well, I'm going to bring my friend you know, that wants to come to the class that's not interested in any of this, hated, and they think it's something that they, they could never believe. And I go, why? <laughs> you said you care about me. Why do you want to bring somebody to the class that you already know completely resist every single thing that I'm talking about? Wouldn't it be better to bring somebody that's going, you know what, I'm confused right now. I'm kind of open to looking at something different and new. Bring them. Not the people that you know is going to think I'm crazy. You don't bring your, your, your cousin that's the grand wizard of the Ku Klux Klan and that ain't going to work. Don't bring, don't bring him. <laughs> yeah, but have mercy. Have mercy on me. You know, oh, God. And if those of you online, if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, please go to earlpurdy.com. And I'm available for one-on-one -on -one sessions called Clarity Sessions. And I really would like those who would also like to work on a one-on-one. -on -one. Also, it's available. Go to my website. It explains it. And I'm, and I'm thankful to you. And I'm grateful for you. This is a deep section. I'm warning you right now. It, it just got cranked up. And all the questions that are coming up in your mind, I guarantee you, they're in the, the Course in Miracles. Jesus anticipates what you're going to ask before you even do it. Just, just sometimes you just wait a minute. You go, oh, that was a question I was going to ask. It, it, it already knows everything you're going to come up with to try to block yourself. That's good. Yes. You, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, you all. 
You don't have to figure it out. Isn't that wonderful? You don't have to figure anything out. And so we're going to do a takeaway in a minute. So at the end of the class, and then we'll do the announcement, okay? Um, so any big takeaway? One thing I heard today that I really want to remember. It's very important that two people in a relationship share the same goal. That's right. That's the easiest kind of relationship to have, is that you can both have the purpose of peace, even if you have two different ways of thinking. But if you've got the same goal, then you're still going to end up in harmony with each other. If my goal is to have <laughs> peace with you, even if you think differently from me, then we're still going to end up being in harmony with each other because I'm not going to attack you. That's what we're talking about. Anybody else? Yeah. If I don't express it, I don't remember it. If I don't express it, I won't remember it. If I love you, Susan, and I never say it, but every time I get upset with you, I say it, what, what is it going to look like? I'm always upset with Susan. Thank you. God's love is unconditional, and when I'm practicing peace, I'll have peace in the midst of the storm. That's right. You have peace in the midst of the storm because true peace has nothing to do with outer conditions. It has to do with the way you're feeling in the inside, no matter what the outer conditions. Absolutely. Yep. Chris. So... When you're in a relationship with someone and you guys make the goal or you ask the Holy Spirit to come in and make it a loving relationship, then everything that's unloving about that relationship is going to come up. It's going to come up. And that's where you just need to be encouraged and not discouraged. That's right. And, and to go, okay, I, I was told that. What is it telling me to do when that happens? Have a, 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 that I tell the Spirit, I'm willing to have my relationship change to fit the goal. I'm, not, I'm willing to let it. My relationship changed to fit the goal. Um, my takeaway is when it, the foundation is self love. So if I'm giving condemnation and guilt to people, then I'm going to expect it for myself. So if forgiveness begins with me, then I give it to others, then I can expect exactly. Love. Exactly. It begins with me. Awesome. I love to hear what I'm remembering. Until I find pure bliss and love. I'm still learning, so be gentle with myself. Be gentle with yourself. The Holy Spirit says he, it, it needs happy learners. And happy learners are people who are not condemning themselves for learning. You, you're probably not going to pick up an instrument and start playing it perfectly the first time. So stop putting that expectation on yourself. Um, even if you've been in a relationship for 15 years, and you're living in the present moment, you can always do it at the beginning and set the goal for peace and Holy Spirit with the same relationship. That's right. That's right. I don't care how long you've been in the relationship, it says it's the, old, the holy relationship is the old relationship transformed and seen the new. And I, and I would venture to say you only get bored with somebody that you're not growing with. And you only get bored with somebody that you're trying to lock them into being a certain way just to fulfill your insecurity. But if you're saying, I'm discovering more me, you're discovering more you, we are growing, I'm opening up, you're going to stay interested to me and I'm going to stay interested to you. So if you're bored in a relationship, get rid of your fear because y'all limiting each other in order to make each other feel secure. Yeah, the, the thing that put it most concisely for me, I don't even know if it was in the text, but the maker of an unholy relationship is the ego. That's right. It was right. That, that's exactly what was in the text. Yeah. And the ego is, the, is what? My false self. It's the self-concept I have of myself based on everything I've learned and experienced in the past. What I was told I am. Anything you put before your peace is your idol. That's right. Anything you put before your peace, that's your idol. That's the thing that means more to you than your peace. So why should you be surprised that you don't have peace? Right? That's, it's, so, it's so simple to that. <laughs> you know? All right. All right. One minute, and then you can run out screaming for your lives. Somebody! <laughs> All right, those of you online, thank you so much. We had a lot of response from everybody today. That is awesome. A lot of new faces. And y'all are talking to each other. And y'all, I can see y'all cute, even though I can't see you. Just, yeah, your name is look cute. I can just tell you that that's the case. Oh, we got, we got to scare the ego off. to these words.